Hey guys, Tyler here. Had a lot of fun playing on the corner map the previous time, so I thought I'd return to it, this time on Chimps Mode. This is considered to be an expert map, so beating on Chimps Mode should not be that easy. Now, I am going to be, us be using a similar strat to how I used in the previous video, however, things are going to have to change due to the fact that it's Chimps Mode, and I have to be a lot more resourceful with my money, and also, I can't just leak a couple random lives to Mana Shield, I have to be extra precise, so everything about this strategy has to be on point. Now, the similar, obviously, we're using Sauna, probably one of the only expert maps for Sauda is good, other one being Dark Castle, but I think this map is better for Sauda than Dark Castle by a lot. I am shocked at how well Sauda does on this map, but it makes sense. I mean, small range, it's a short track, it really does not make a difference to her. And then I got an unupgraded sniper as... If I didn't get any additional damage, I would actually leak to Yellow Bloons on round 11, which is just before Sada gets her uh, third tier ability up. So I figured I might as well just get a Sniper to help out with that, to put it on strong, snipe some yellows. I just needed something. It could have been a dart monkey, but I didn't want a dart monkey because I wanted a tower that would actually be away from the track so it wouldn't steal any alchemist buffs. Sniper fits the bill and it's pretty cheap. And all this was so I could make my way towards this spike factory. Saw the spike factory strategies definitely seem familiar, but this time I'm really hardcore Russian spike factory. Going for long life spikes right away, and then I'm gonna try to alk buff it. These towers work so, so well together. Just due to the fact that Sauda really is going to get 90% of the damage, and the Spike Factory is just perfect for catching leaks. But despite that, I'm going to make my Spike Factory into the main DPS, at least for the next few rounds. Uh, the Elk buff is going on the Spike Factory rather than Sauda, and I'm going to be going for Deadly Spikes so we can beat the Moab. If I just Elk buff Sauda and try to beat the Moab, it's probably beatable, but a lot more dicey, because what you have to do is let this spikes themselves pop the mod and use Sada's ability to one shot the ceramics and that's not something i'm consistently going to get it just does not seem at all worth it using Sada's abilities a little bit here and there but honestly it's not super important it's mostly just so i could have a bit of fun and be extra precise now as we're approaching round 40 you will see we're just able to get perishing potions on the alchemist and use that to buff both Sada and the deadly spike spike factory uh, quite effectively so when the mob gets taken down easily next up is jungle drum so we just so we can buff the attack speed of sada and the spike factory and the next thing we do is get perma spike yeah i wish i was kidding but the in fact the next thing we do is upgrade our 024 spike factory to perma spike on round 43 on an expert map this defense is able to survive to the late 50s, early 60s in order to afford Perma Spike. Literally nothing else needs to be done uh, except for a bit of micromanagement. Sauna's ability timing actually does get a bit important come the 50s, but the fact is I could just save up money and profit massively. This defense is that powerful. So is this really an expert map? I mean, if Dark Castle can be considered an expert map, I guess this can too. If I was to compare the two, I would even say this is a little harder than Dark Castle. It's just that this specific strategy works out so easily, but I'm sure there's also some extremely easy strategy on Dark Castle. I bet there's even more easy strategies on Dark Castle, to be honest. It seems like this one strategy is just really easy for this map. But like I said, in the mid-50s, you do have to do a bit of micromanagement. Otherwise, your spike bomb might get overwhelmed. 54, and I guess also 52 earlier, all had required Sada's abilities to be used on the innards of the Moab. 55 will also require Sada's ability to be used on the final wave of ceramics. And I think somewhere maybe 57 or 58, one of the two, also requires abilities. Maybe both. Maybe both, but we're really getting there anyways. And once Perma Spike is achieved, it is going to be super easy. We also even have Sada's level 10 ability just in case. But I think we still have a decent spike file. Now it's Hard to tell because the money symbol is covering it, but you can just assume our spike pile is pretty solid. And without further ado, here's Perma Spike, as I promised, and now we get to carry on. Now, the next thing we do after buying Perma Spike is a tower I wanted to try out in this map that I thought could be a lot of fun. 
the Carpet of Spikes. Now, you might be thinking, well, do you need to get any support towers on the way to there? Nope, I'm just gonna get Carpet of Spikes. I'm not even gonna get White Hot Spikes. I mean, don't really need it yet. We have lead detection on pretty much everything else anyways. It's not that important. But yeah, uh, Perma Spike, this is a bit less surprising because Perma Spike can solo the 60s and 70s real easily, even on a short map like this. So just saving up for a Carpet of Spikes is not too bad, but I really want to try it for this map because it's just interesting that you, just because the map is shorter does not mean there's going to be less spikes coming out of this tower's ability. It's going to be the same number of spikes, but distributed over a shorter area, which means it'll just be a really dense wall of spikes. And if any balloon makes it through 80% of the track, it will hit so many of the spikes um, pooped out from this spike throwing machine. So I thought the carpet of spikes would be really interesting. Every 15 seconds, it gets maximum damage, which is really rare. It, not many maps will actually let the carpet of spikes get max damage, but it, I thought I could use this to compound against the moibs. Even just the fourth tier spike storm is pretty good. It solos a BFB. It can solo a few moibs, maybe a BFB and a half to be exact. And that's just a little extra help, you know, just making sure that the perma spike doesn't get overwhelmed. And we are saving up for that again. Now I'm just going to jump ahead to round 80 where the ZOMG shows up. We can look at the ZOMG, see that it's no problem, and take a look at the Super Ceramics. The Super Ceramics, coming from 81 and above, are going to be scary. But thankfully our Sauna has leveled up plenty, and we are very close to Carpet of Spikes. Actually achieving it now at the end of round 82. Just like that. And Sauna levels up, maybe it's like level 15 or so. And after getting the Carpet of Spikes, it's... Uh, a bit improvised here. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. I want to get Carpet of Spikes. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure I'll be fine. You know, maybe Carpet of Spikes is power enough, powerful enough that if it gets its full value, can just solo everything. If not, I got Perma Spike and Sauna. What could possibly go wrong? But I might as well try to synergize with Sauna. The glue, Moab Glue allows Sauna to do more damage to these glued slash slowed balloons. I forget exactly by how much. Could also get some important things like maybe Unstable Concoction and Ninja Sabotage and all that. A lot of fun stuff for late game free play. Usually it's not too bad, but again, you have to watch out for some of the dicey 90s rounds. Now, I know a lot of people have been trying to get to this map, and I have a feeling that if you have not accessed the map at this point, you might have missed the bus. But to be honest, I don't know about the workings of this map, because I thought this was just supposed to be a uh, Easter egg map that was available to everyone, and now I don't know what the deal is. So I'm just uh, assuming that, you know, people got, it got patched out or something like that. I don't know what the deal is, but I can still access it. So I thought I'd have a bit more fun with it. Not often that I get to play on a unique map that is really just a bit of a meme. So yeah, I got a couple of other things up. Like I said, Sabotage, Unstable Concoction, and Alchemist buff, mostly for the carpet of spikes, just for when this ability isn't going. Thought that'd be nice. And I figured that at this point, the only thing I could pros possibly lose to would be maybe the BAD on round 100. Maybe I just don't have enough damage. Everything else will be fine. So shortly, I will be getting a first strike to deal with that. Now, when I get this first strike, I'm going to be regretting it a little bit. I'll be wishing I had gotten a Shattering Shells. Couldn't think of the name of it. I was hoping I could get that, because if you saw around 94, you saw it was pretty dense, pretty scary. Couldn't tell if Perma Spike was struggling, but it really makes you wonder. 95 is a lot easier in comparison. It's just fewer balloons, and the Carpet of Spikes just specializes, but... Uh, here, you know, 96, once again, it's a bunch of dense balloons. A lot make it to Perma Spike. Perma Spike isn't immortal, and we're not doing that thing where we stall out the rounds every single round and get maximum Perma Spike pile at the end of it. It's just not happening. So, let me introduce to you round 98. The mother load of dense rounds. I just have a couple unstable concoctions, you know, sabotage. Just like, oh yeah, this will be perfectly fine. We'll just keep coasting or make our way to 100. Maybe a little ability activation, and uh, what do you know? We lose. So that's cool. I did not at all prepare for round 98. I'm like, wait a second. I have less than $6,000 just saved up right now. I don't know if I can bail myself out of this situation. There's a lot of other towers and upgrades I could try, but a lot of this is just going to end up with failure. After trying a bunch of different towers and different ideas, I finally came across this strategy, a Moab Press comboed with another unstable concoction. 
Void Press as a surprisingly underrated tower, at least in my eyes. Never saw it used much, but maybe people picked it up over the time I was gone. To push back the blimps of all sorts of BFBs and ZOMGs, and then another unstable concoction because dense balloons on this round just makes sense. Using the extra money we gained during the round for more, more presses and more unstable concoctions, and that adds up to enough damage and allows me to get that spike, or not spike factory, um, first strike damage on the final cluster of moibs, making it useful. And I'm happy it's useful because I'm not at all going to use it against the BAD. The ability's down, and I just have carpet of spikes anyways. Turns out that's enough damage on its own. Duh. And the void press makes it so the ZOMGs are no longer an issue. And we clean it up really well with unstable concoction. Winning us the run. Completing chimps mode on the corner map. Pretty fun time. Although 98 did give me a bit of a spook. If I was to do this, again, I would definitely go for Shattering Shells over First Strike, especially seeing that the Carpet of Spike simply solos round 100. No issue there. I am kind of curious if this map would be insanely hard if Sauna didn't exist. Because early game seems like a bit of a hassle, not gonna lie. Sauna is just a really convenient way to get through the early game for cheap and then scales so well for damage. And Carpet of Spikes is so interesting on here. Anyways, this was Chimps Mode on the corner map, Blondes. Had a lot of fun with it. Hope you guys enjoyed watching, and thank you for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys all in tomorrow's video. Peace.